What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and on today's episode we're finally going to be prepping our big block for our gravy bones cart. Now we went to Cars and Cameras race with a small block on it and I knew it wasn't going to perform. It performs great with Lonnie or Braxton but your boy weighs double so uh, we're going to put a big block on it. But this big block came off the tandem mini bike. Uh, if you remember we swapped it to a Tiltson uh, because that was a better weighted engine and better setup for that uh, that frame. So we have this one. This is a stage one, so it has no governor and uh, the 50 pound valve springs from Go Power Sports, but it doesn't have a billet rod. It's got stock cam and it has stock flywheel on it. Um, also, it has the electric start still on it. So what we're gonna be doing is pulling off the starter, uh, pulling off the flywheel, getting the crank out and stuff and doing the rod cam, billet flywheel and the electric start removal because we're not gonna run uh, power on this car so we just want it to be recoil start also we're going to be upgrading to go power sports 34 millimeter Makuni that is the best carb to slap on these engines they're true Makunis too they are a Makuni dealer uh, so make sure to check out all the links for all the parts in the video description uh, I'm almost positive that I have 50 pound valve springs in this but we have some double boys from go power sports so we're probably going to upgrade to those as well um, so we're going to start tearing this thing down Half our work's already done. We've got the governor removed, but we are going to be disassembling pretty much everything. Let's do it. First off, we're going to pull this side cover off and get it out of the way, and we can go ahead and remove the flywheel and the starter. That coil looks pretty rough, but we'll give it a sand in this thing. We're still firing good, and we're going to upgrade the actual spark plug wire to the MSD setup we always do. So this is an insulator. This goes between the carb and the head and this has a pulse pump port on it. These are pretty handy if you're running the stock carb and you need a pulse pump. What you can do is use your factory one, drill a quarter inch hole and a quarter inch brake line will shove really tightly in that hole uh, you almost have to press it in there and then you can make these for pretty much no money. And you can see that's exactly what I did with this. Took a brake line the flared in, works as a little neck to grab, and we just drilled a quarter inch hole and pressed that right in there. We're going to go ahead and remove the starter, the flywheel, uh, completely get it off, and then we can start working on uh, pulling the head off. And these Duramaxes only come with one charging coil. Uh, so if you're wanting to run the stock flywheel, if you still have the governor, it's good to add a second coil uh, like we did in the wiring video, which I'll uh, link down below. And it shows you how to run two coils with a Go Power Sports voltage regulator. And uh, it works way better than a single coil setup. Just to compare, this is our new flywheel from Go Power Sports. And this is our big chunky boy um, off the engine. So a definite upgrade. Now I went ahead and pulled this without taking the valve train out just because I can remove this on the bench, no big deal. Uh, you can see we're not too carved up, but we barely ran this engine. And this head gasket is actually reusable. Um, I don't know if we are gonna reuse it, but we can. We might go with a thinner one just to up the compression a little bit. You can see our stock push rods. We're gonna be upgrading to some chrome ollie ones that are way beefier, can handle way more RPMs and way more lift on our cam. Next, we can drain the oil out of this block and we can remove our 10 bolts from the side cover and get that crank out. Now, a lot of my builds in the past, I've removed this balance shaft but we're actually gonna leave it in this time. Of course, we gotta remove it to pull the crank, but we're gonna be putting this back in because this really don't help performance removing this. Uh, you're gonna get a little bit more 
low end like you, you're not going to be able to bog the engine as much with this in there and no way around it we're going to have vibrations with this engine so removing this is just going to make those worse unless we balance the crankshaft and we're not doing that right now uh, because we will be doing a billet crankshaft later so we can just set this aside with the side cover and you can see that black stuff sitting in the bottom this is why you got to do the break-in oil changes because this junk is just breaking in of all this these components from being new and they leave that nasty sludge in there so it's good to run your engine and break it in before doing your build on it just to let this you know go through I mean you can see how bad that stuff is it's just black sediment sitting in the bottom now you can remove the cam I had to rotate the engine around just to get the rod out of the way again stock cam so we're going to keep this to make a trophy for our race coming up go ahead and pull out our cam followers cam tappets whatever you want to call them we're going to use a tin to break these rod bolts loose Now the only reason we're removing the crankshaft is to check our oil clearance on our rod. So we're going to be checking our oil clearance with this new rod and rod bearing. The reason why you want to do this is you want to make sure you have the proper oil clearance. So if it's too much, then you're going to have rod knock. And if it's too little, oil is not going to get to this bearing and it's going to end up seizing or wearing out your bearing and wearing out the journal on your crankshaft. So this is really important that you check this. I know a lot of people don't, they just throw these rods in but that's uh that and over and under torquing is 90 percent of the problem that people have when installing these rods so we have our soft jaws in our vise we have this clamp down extremely tight uh not enough to damage the rod that's why we're using these soft jaws and we can lay our crankshaft in here dry no oils on anything and we can lay our plastic dip on torque our rod cap down the spec then we can pull it off and see the squish of the plastic dip all right again we're going to lay this on dry no lube so we're looking for two to four thousandths squish on our plastic gauge so we want no less than two no more than four three is a sweet spot so if we're anywhere from two to four thousandths of squish then we're good we're going to be using the red because it goes from two thousandths to six thousandths uh, to check we're going to cut a small piece wide enough to set in here and we'll torque that cap down the spec which is 26 foot pounds we're going to start at 16, add four foot pounds until we get to our 26 foot pounds uh, while skipping from bolt to bolt. I'll lay the plastic gauge right in the center. You can see the plastic gauge sitting right there on the current journal. Now, the long ear of this rod matches up with the oil dipper. We're going to slide that down evenly. We're going to torque these bolts dry we have our torque wrench set to 16 foot pounds remember we'll start at 16 and do both both bolts and then move four foot pounds at a time until we reach 26 all right now that we have those torqued down we use a standard ratchet I never use my torque wrenches to loosen. All right, moment of truth. You can see our squish on our rod bearing, our rod cap bearing, and then on the crankshaft is the plastic gauge has a little gauge on it to see the squish. So we're just gonna compare and see where it falls. This is falling exactly three thousandths, which is exactly where we need it, which makes sense because this is a brand new engine if there was too tight you would have to either get you would have to get your crank polished to give it more clearance or if it's too much of a gap then you might have to replace your crank because it's too war so i always say you know start with a fresh engine if you can so we can see there that that is lining up perfectly with three thousandths which is exactly what we want so now we're just going to use our fingernail and scratch all this plastic gauge off and we're ready to install it 
Now you really want to check this in several different places instead of just on that one place because these are Chinese engines. They could have a a oval crank so it's nice to do it in a couple different spots maybe pull the crank out put the plastic dip on the bottom next and retorque uh, checking it in at least two and you can do this with a good set of calipers but plastic dip is a true way to see the actual oil clearance in between that rod bearing and the journal of the crankshaft so now that we have that checked we can install our billet rod onto our piston and start reassembling everything back in the block so now you'll notice the rod and piston came out of the engine like this so that's how it sets the dipper pointing down this dipper is smacking the oil and slinging it all around the block it's a splash lubricated engine so that's how it does it now you can see how ineffective this is it's very skinny very narrow so that's not that's really cutting through the oil i mean it works really good actually but not as good as the billet rod the billet one is designed with a scoop on it with a hole so when this scoops oil it forces it through that hole lubing this way better than this ever could so that's why these last you know 20 times longer it's just way better design i still need to scrape the plastic gauge off of my bearing but we can first pull our wrist pin you can see there's a little clip inside of there and if we get this under it put our finger over it so it won't go flying we have our wrist pin clip now our wrist pin will just push right out and we don't have to pull it all the way out. Sometimes it'll slide all the way out. And we're gonna pull our rod right off of there. There's also an arrow on this piston, as you can see, right there. And that points down inside the block. So we're gonna hold our piston just like this. We're gonna take it with the long ear of the billet rod pointing down with the arrow. We're gonna slide that wrist pin into the rod. Good, nice, snug fit. And we'll oil, oil all this when we get ready to install it. Now that clip, it does have an open end to it. We're just going to set that in there and kind of get it to slide. This is hard to, to film. Take our pick. Push it all the way down in there. Make sure it's seated all the way around. And you can push on that wrist pin to make sure it's seated. Now our piston is ready to install. Before we install it, we need to make sure our ring gaps are spaced out properly away from each other uh, because that can help leak compression and blow by into your engine. Now we can slide our crankshaft back into our block. Get everything lined up. I'm gonna be using some assembly lube. Open that up. I'm gonna go ahead and oil the cylinder wall. This stuff is Ultra Slimy Boy 3000. And it looks like we got a little. Actually, before we do this, we're going to hone out this cylinder because we got some a little bit of rust happening on our cylinder walls. So I'm going to pull the crank back out. And I'm going to run my honer in there real quick. So here's our cheap Amazon honer. These do a great job. Uh, a ball honer is better, but this is what we have. I do need to up my game, please. Get a little bit of some motor oil because we don't want to do this dry. We're just going to dip our fingers in, run that around. Already got some assembly lube in there. So now we can take our honer, squeeze it, get it in there. Now we're going to drill and move in and out at the same time. And when we end, we're going to pull the honer out while still drilling. I'm gonna tell you, that looks a million times better already. Probably should have showed you on before I started. And you're definitely gonna to wanna to clean all that, clean this cylinder really well. But we just had a tiny bit of surface rust where this box, the engine uh, was sitting on a box and it sat under a tarp outside. So naturally moisture got into it just from the air. You can see we're getting some dirt out of it. So I'm gonna grab a fresh paper towel and use some blaster brake cleaner and I'm gonna clean that really well before installing it in the engine, the piston in. No, that's real nice, Clark. That's real nice. I wish I'd shown you guys before. There was some rust, there was some rust pitting right down in here. So that looks good. 
Now we can slide our crank back into the block. Now we're going to want our ring openings. You can see that one there. And this one's completely on opposite sides. We're going to do them at 120 degrees apart. Um, so you can space the oil scrapers 120 degrees as well from this. Just make sure everything's good. Now we can oil our ring squeezer really well. We'll slide our ring squeezer on, letting the ears of the piston hang out a little bit. And what I'm going to also do is make sure it's uniform all the way around. Now you're going to tighten this as much as you can to really squeeze those piston rings. Now we've got our piston in our ring squeezer. Oh my goodness gracious, there's a little oil. And oil our cylinder. So long ear of the piston rod down. Get those ears skirts of the piston lined up in there. We slot it. Take my old beat up hammer and tap that in. Make sure it's seated. And there we go. Now, I have done that before being in a hurry and I've broke a ring. That sucks. Let me tell you, it ain't fun. So now, we're going to rotate our crank around and get it seated on the rod, but first, that's where our assembly loop is going to come in handy. Put a little bit on our finger. By the way, this stuff smells like cinnamon. I don't know why. I don't know why they chose to do that. And there we go. Now we can install our rod cap, get them finger tight, and then repeat the torquing specs that we did before. All right, so we put some assembly lube on our cam followers, cam tappets, whatever you want to call them. So that's going to help hold them into place so they won't slide out. Now we can slide in our new 308 cam from Go Power Sports. This is my favorite cam to use in big blocks. Uh, and you can notice we have a dot there and a dot on the crankshaft. We're going to line those two up. And that is going to get us in time. And there we go. You can see right there are two dots. This one here and this one there is lined up. Now we can go ahead and spin the engine over. So we can line up the secondary dot right there with our balance shaft. All right, so you notice the balance shaft has a dot as well. So, there we go. Now that we have a new billet rod and a higher lift cam, we can run into a problem where the cam lobes hit the, the uh, rod or other problems like that. The rod can hit the block in certain places. So now we need to rotate the engine over, but we need to hold everything in place exactly where it's going to be. So we have this side cover we've cut up that will slide over everything and hold everything in place. All right, so I took my original side cover and I cut it up because I have one on order uh, just so we can finish this block out as much as possible. So I had to order the 10 bolt side cover gasket. That's how these 440s and the Vegas Cart 460s are different from a GX390 is they have a 10 bolt side cover, which is a lot stronger, of course, more bolts, the better. So I cut up my original side cover. And then the reason we do this, of course, is to spin the engine around, make sure nothing is hitting uh, and also push stuff side to side and keep rotating it push the cam all the way towards the back rotate it pull the cam all the way out rotate it and just really look and make sure nothing is uh, contacting anything we're good i'm going to leave this bolted up just like this so we can go ahead and start prepping and putting on our head now i'm just going to clean this piston and another difference between the 460 the vegas cart 460 is it has a flat top piston this one's a little bit dished not much but that still lowers our compression just a hair um, but 
Uh, that's fine because we are going to be doing a build on this soon with a forged flat top piston we're going to do a different head on it because this head is not ported we're basically doing a good stage one on this is or sorry a stage two so next we'll do we'll keep on building this cart on the channel and uh keep on making that more power baby so now we can get our head ready to put back on and i'm a lot of people will say this is crazy but I'm going to run this head gasket. It's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. And actually, I'm going to go see if I got a thinner one first. But if I don't, then I'm going to run this one. All right. I did not have a head gasket. So we we're just going to put this one right back on there. This was very, very lightly used. So I'm going to go with it. I'm not recommending you do that. But your boy's going to. All right. 25 foot pounds. that is torqued down now i can remove all the rockers Alright guys, so that is the build up of the uh, 440cc for the Gravy Bones car. So this engine's finally going to give the Gravy Bones some justice. Uh, this is just like a mild, like a stage 2 build. We'll be going further with big valves and a milled and ported head later, some ratio rockers, and really put some crazy power on the Gravy Bones cart because that 212 just didn't do nothing for it. And we have a tire upgrade because when we put this engine on, which will be the next episode on the Gravy cart, is installing this and taking it out ripping, you're going to notice it's probably going to do nothing but spin. So we will take it to some asphalt and stuff and play around with it. But we are doing a tire upgrade in the future. And make sure to check out the links for everything we use on this engine. They're linked down below and some parts we're going to be using in the future will be linked down there as well. So make sure to check out those links and uh, those help us out a ton if you guys use them. They keep us doing these videos. Also, we have a lot of builds coming up like how-to builds fully in depth like my normal engine builds on big blocks. A lot of people want to see more on big blocks so we're going to be giving it to you. We also got new merch. We got the graffiti logo and the gravy bones logo out on our new uh, merch website it's a link down below as well and we have new stickers so support your boy help me from going bankrupt and buy my stuff thank you guys so much for watching we love you and god bless